never try to solve your marital problems. It might sound like a contradiction, but in this video, I'm going to give you the three reasons why you should never solve the problems in your marriage. And then instead of doing that, what should you do? I'm going to give you three ways to bring about loads of love and laughter in your marriage. Continue to watch this video. Hi, Valerian Sikwera here and I teach relationship science to bring back love into the marriage. In this video, before I jump into the video, a quick disclaimer. This video and all my videos are not for somebody who is a hater, who wants to uh, find out how they are right and they are, how their spouse is wrong. These videos are only for those who want to find out how they can have an amazing marriage and what they can do to create it. Because the marriage is awesome for only those who create it. With, those, with that disclaimer, let us jump into the three reasons. The first reason why you should never talk about or never try to solve marital problems is because the problems that you think about are the problems are not the problems. So let's say you have, you're talking about the problem is uh, her, in, her parents are interfering in your marriage in the case of a man. Now, if that's the problem, actually it is not a problem. It is a symptom of a problem. So what is the symptom? In order to understand the symptom, you got to understand the stages of a marriage. And when you understand the stages, the three stages of a marriage, you realize that there is nothing wrong with your marriage. So what are the three stages? The first stage of your marriage is the romance stage, where everything is beautiful, everything is loving, caring, and everything is perfect. And that's how we begin. For some, it ends very soon. For some, it lasts for a month or two months or a year. But the truth is, it's supposed to end. And when it ends, when the romance stage ends, we get into power struggle stage. And when we get into power struggle stage, basically we stop loving the other person. And because we are not loving the other person, the other person stops loving us. The only funny part is, our brain is not able to process that. A brain can only process how the other person is not loving us. It is not able to process how we are not loving. So when we are doing this, all the other things start appearing. For example, the a spouse is being stubborn, arrogant, aggressive, not talking, not communicating, or the in interference of in-laws or the affairs or whatever problem you're talking about, they come in when we get into power struggle. And most couples, 7 out of 10 couples, don't get out of this power struggle. So the problem is not the problem. So there is no point in pro focusing on the problem when it, on the problem that is appearing. Because by solving it, you will not bring back love. You will not take your marriage from what is called as a power struggle to mature love. The second reason why you shouldn't focus on the... The second reason why you shouldn't focus on the problems is because negativity breeds negativity. In other words, when you're focusing on the problems in your marriage, what are you focusing on? You're focusing on your spouse. And what about your spouse you're focusing on? It's the negative qualities. You would be saying that my spouse is doing this and this is something negative. And more you focus on the negatives, the what you focus on expands. So you cannot bring back love by focusing on something that is negative about your spouse. So the second reason is negativity breeds negativity. By talking about the problems, you'll have more problems. The third reason why you shouldn't try to resolve the problems in your marriage is because focusing on the problems in your marriage is a disaster behavior. What do I mean by that? John Gottman, one of the experts in relationship science, had done thousands of um, he had, he had observed thousands of couples. In fact, he created something called a love lab where a couple would come and stay over a weekend. And once the couple would leave, he would watch the recording of their interaction when they were in the love lab. And then he would predict which couple will be together after five years and which couple will divorce. And he was very good at it. He could get it right around 94, with 94% accuracy. So one of the qualities that he noticed about, and he divided couples based on this into masters and disasters. Masters are those 
whose marriages last for years and they have an amazing connection and disasters are those uh, whose marriages end in separation, divorce or they're living in the same house as roommates. And one quality that he noticed is that the disasters would scan their environment, their marital environment and look for what is wrong with their spouse and try to highlight it, try to point it out, try to show. And when one partner does that, the other partner also does. So the third reason why you shouldn't try to solve your problems or focus on them is because focusing on problems is the behavior of a disaster couple. Now, if these are the three things and these are the three reasons why you shouldn't focus on the problems, then what you should do? The thing that you need to do is put all your problems into an envelope. In fact, um, in our community, when, when people join the program, one of the things I tell them is get an envelope, write all the problems they have, fold that, in, uh, fold, uh, fold that paper, put it in that envelope and put it away. And then after about six months, after about three years, uh, after about a year, I, you can take it out and you realize that all those problems have disappeared without focusing on them. So the first thing to do is put all your problems into an envelope and forget about the problems. Now, what do you do instead of trying to solve the problems? There are three things you got to do. The first thing you got to do is you got to introspect. Introspect. Because whatever your spouse is doing is a reaction to your action. In other words, your spouse is your reflection. Just the way we cannot see our own face uh, except in the on the mirror, the same way we cannot see our own behaviors except in our spouse's behaviors. So when you see your spouse being unloving, uncaring, or not understanding you, it is a great opportunity for you to look into yourself and find out what is it about you that is creating this reaction. There has to be something about you. Now, this is the first thing, introspect. The, because when you change yourself in a systematic way, the other person changes. The second thing to do is look for things to admire and appreciate. And somebody would tell me, there is nothing positive about my spouse to admire or appreciate. You're absolutely wrong. I want you to look at this picture. And when you're looking at this picture, you will notice one of the two things. One, either you will see a young lady or you will see an old lady. And if you're seeing the old lady first, there is also a young lady. And if you stare at this picture, after some time, you'll be able to see the young lady. But initially, you'll say there is no young lady. There is only old lady. The truth is there are both. Same in your spouse. There are two qualities, good and the not so good. And the question is, what are you focusing on? And uh, I learned this from Wayne Dwyer, one of the famous speakers. He says, when we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. And I believe that it's true for people as well. When I change the way I look at my spouse, the spouse I'm looking at changes. Changes. And the third thing to do is you got to learn relationship science. Why learn relationship science? The reason is, as I said earlier, our brain or our relationship works on the third principle of Newton. And the second rule is our brain hides our action. The third principle of Newton is every action has equal and opposite reaction. But the problem is our brain hides our action and highlights our partner's reaction. So we are just not able to see where we are going wrong. And that's where relationship science comes in. When you understand the formula, when you understand the patterns, when you understand the behaviors, that's your behaviors that are creating this reaction and you start changing your own behavior in a systematic way, your spouse changes. And if you're interested in learning this science, this most amazing science, then I invite you to attend one of my master classes. You'll see the link out here. It is coachval.co. Go to this link and sign up for this masterclass. So that's all for this video. And if you have liked this video so far, please click on that like button. If you have not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and subscribe to this channel because every week I put up a video. And if you want to get a, want to be notified, click on that notification button, that bell icon. And before you leave, what's the one insight that you have? 
just write it in the comment section i would love to read it and respond to you and if there is somebody who is going through a difficult marriage at this moment and you think that this particular video can help that person please share this video with that person i'll see you in the next video until then as always keep your love story alive bye bye